hello, uh, my name is uh, Pavana Kumar uh, Mohanamurli. Uh, I'm a senior researcher at uh, the Algo Co-op team uh, in Surfax. Uh, I'll be presenting our uh, AVB porting activities uh, in the EPIC uh, project, uh, which was conducted uh, in the WP Work Package 5 application co-design of uh, the EPIC project. So this will be sort of a summary of our uh, work during uh, conducted as part of the work package. Uh, so here's a brief glimpse of uh, what AVBP is and what our exascale roadmap looks like. Uh, so AVVP is an unstructured combustion uh, large eddy simulation code. It's a Fortran code uh, based on the Fortran language and use uh, domain decomposition uh, for parallelization across uh, multiple nodes or cores. And we use uh, MPI as a communication layer. So as you see, as you can see the figure on the uh, right hand side, uh, so we actually decompose the given unstructured mesh uh, into domains and each of these domains communicate and then uh, perform computation in parallel. Uh, so there are some uh, uh, big uh, disadvantages when we have to go to excess scale with this kind of a configuration. Uh, the biggest uh, disadvantage that we had uh, was the load balancing and partitioning at uh, such a large scale, especially going EXA. Uh, the other major challenge that we foresee is the uh, hierarchical nature of the hardware. So you have a node and multiple sockets and the sockets are heterogeneous. For example, you can have CPUs, you can have uh, accelerators, for example, like GPUs or uh, uh, you know FPGAs. Uh, and all these are at sort of in a hierarchy uh, and you need sort of topological awareness uh, built into your code so that on each of these hardware you run uh, most optimally. And then the other challenge is the heterogeneous nature of the hardware. So each hardware has its own uh, way of uh, executing instructions and own way of uh, best uh, storage of uh, the data structure and things. Uh, so this presents a big challenge uh, because maintenance of the code becomes really difficult if you have to maintain two different codes on two different hardwares. Uh, and of course, this brings us to the next challenge of portable performance. Uh, so you write a single code and then get a good performance out of or optimal performance out of a different hardware. And uh, of course, this code should be maintainable because we have a large uh, 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 army of PhD students at Surfax who will be uh, building their models and implementing them in the AVPP code. And of course, we want all this effort to be uh, incremental uh, because AVBP is a very large code base, which is shared by a lot of our European and Canadian partners and a lot of industrial partners. So we want the effort to be incremental so that our partners have a less uh, work in ad uh, adopting to the uh, changes that we do. So it's the gradual, the better. Uh, and finally, uh, we are looking for sort of a sustainable programming model because we see a new programming model being released every year or, or, or uh, every uh, turn of the uh, six months. Uh, and this still remains uh, sort of a gray zone uh, for us. So these are some of the challenges that we have been facing and sort of give you a brief roadmap of where heavy BP is headed. Um, so the first barrier that I talked about is the load, large scale load balancing and uh, partitioning of, of the given domain. Since AVBP uses an unstructured mesh, uh, we had limitations of using our current uh, existing uh, uh, partitioning tools, which uh, largely depend on uh, Metis and Scotch. Uh, and we found that doing on the fly online partitioning, uh, we, we were restricted to something like 5,000 to maximum 6,000 ranks, MPI ranks. Uh, and uh, due to the presence of uh, all to all communications, uh, we really couldn't scale uh, these. Uh, graph partitioners. And uh, so we had to come up with a new uh, partitioning tool uh, called uh, TreePart, which was developed as part of the EPIC project, uh, which does a hierarchical uh, partitioning. So it has a topology aware layer that detects different hardware topologies and maps uh, the given problem onto these topologies. So by sort of aggregating uh, cores into sockets and sockets into nodes, uh, you create lesser decompositions 
and you as you go down the hierarchy you create more and more partitions so as a result uh, we were able to scale existing graph partitioners to more than 100000 uh, ranks and what i have shown here is uh, a sample till uh, 26k ranks and as you can see the traditional uh, um, uh, the inbuilt partitioner inside of r code failed uh, for like 5000 to 6 on 6000 6, ranks but uh, we still we found find that uh, our partitioner exceeds uh, 100 uh, k ranks and in a, we have been able to partition in excess of uh, 1.4 billion elements and uh, we have a dynamic load balancer uh, at each hierarchical level so you can actually choose where to do the load balancing and you can choose at what hierarchy you want to do you want to perform the load balance and we have a variety of partitioning methods available and each level can have its own uh, type of partitioning algorithm uh, and then came the second uh, challenge is now that we have partitioned the meshes we have optimally placed them into logical hardware hierarchies uh, now can we exploit this topological structure uh, to improve communication Uh, so we actually did that by leveraging the mpi3 uh, shared memory uh, copy so if you are within a node you, you exploit this shared memory uh, primitives which are given by mpi3 and use simple memory copy and if you are uh, off a node then you use the network to do uh, the communication uh, so this is a small library built inside of tree part called uh, Uh, shash hello uh, and this this was also developed as part of the epic project and then we have a, a cache block or ca uh, a loop blocking uh, paradigm so where we take the existing partition mesh as you can see the figure uh, uh, given uh, on the, below the slide so you have ranks 0 1 2 and 3 which are partitioned so these are at the bottom most level of the hierarchy and each of these partitions get uh, divided into small cache block size and all the kernel loops uh, will be uh, on these cache block cache block widths so this allows for loop and cache blocking uh, optimizations on top of that we also uh, performed uh, partial distance to coloring of these cache blocks so that within a loop you don't get uh, dependency of Uh, one uh, cache block with the other so there is absolutely zero loop uh, dependency so all these optimizations that i just described uh, gave us uh, very good uh, results yielded very good results so we now have the hierarchical load balance and which which enables us to choose the right hierarchy to dynamically load balance uh, as you can see doing the balancing at the most coarsest level Uh, is really expensive but as you go down the hierarchy the cost of uh, load balancing comes lower and lower uh, but you still get the benefit of uh, improved speed up on whatever hierarchy that you are in so uh, we can choose to how frequently adapt on each of these hierarchies and this gives us a very good optimal choice uh, of of getting the right uh, load balancing uh, algorithm for the coarse grain partitions Uh, this was very important and then the other uh, improvement that we could uh, extract out was the because of the topology awareness so since we have an improved placement uh, our partitions are placed more closer to each other which communicate more frequently so they end up being in the same die and uh, they leverage most of the most of the shared memory uh, uh copy in instead of the network so it totally avoids the network uh, in most of the cases and uh, as you can see we get close to 20% speed up just by doing uh, you know building topology awareness and the hierarchical nature uh, of the hardware into it and uh, these are already in production and being used uh, in surfax by our uh, stakeholders as well Uh, now that i have described the coarse grain part of uh, the activities and let me now jump on to the fine grain programming models that we have been uh, testing in this work package uh, so i have two different uh, uh, applications here one is the full avbp uh, application code uh, and then a mini application that we had to 
uh, we specially specially wrote uh, for for the epic project uh, for the full avbp application we have tested the open acc uh, pragma based uh, parallelization uh, and this has yielded us uh, benefits on running avbp on gpus and then the open mp pragma based uh, parallelization leveraging the uh, distance to coloring uh, zero dependency loop structure that i just described uh, and then we have written a c++ kernel uh, avbp mini application which takes the gather scatter finite element kernel uh, which is the most uh, a, a computationally intensive part of uh, the avbp solver uh, and we tried do uh, implementing the ohms and the open mp pragma based to compare uh, the two implementations and the uh, uh, open acc uh, uh, pragma based uh, parallelization on gpus was done in collaboration with uh, uh, coe accelerate and nvidia so here are some of the results uh, of the open mp parallelization of the full um, avbp application uh, as you can see we we get a good speed up uh, for uh, the uh, once we go uh, for higher number of thread counts uh, but one major uh, problem that we uh, saw was coloring actually destroys cache locality uh, so we we try to uh, eliminate it by doing some renumbering and reordering of elements and nodes uh, but still uh, it it does seem to uh, uh, remove some of the cache benefits that you actually get uh, from a full uh, Uh, pure mpi code where you over decompose the problem and run uh, the problem on each core so they have a better locality of of data uh, and the other problem that we foresaw was the thread creation and destruction uh, happening every time in a loop and uh, these are quite expensive that and prevent uh, further uh, speed up gains uh, this is these are some of the results that we obtained for the open acc uh, gpu scaling uh, and uh, this seemed to give us uh, one of the best uh, uh, speed ups uh, compared to all the pragma based uh, 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 things that we tried uh, so the main main takeaway message is uh, we could actually uh, get socket to socket a uh, better gpu performance uh, than cpu so we now have gpu codes uh, that run faster than the cpu socket to socket sort of comparison uh, and uh, this this didn't come uh, really easy uh, there was a lot of uh, code change that was necessary and some of the data structures we had to slightly redesign and uh, put a lot of thought into uh, the performance but still uh, all these are pragma based so they are quite maintainable and uh, uh, and and the speed up achieved is 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 quite satisfactory uh, and the next part i would be covering is the avbp mini application uh, the ohms uh, uh, modeling uh, platform uh, has limited support for the fortran generic type bound procedure which is Uh, a feature in modern fortran uh, and it's being uh, very heavily leveraged inside of avbp code uh, so since we couldn't use this feature uh, we had to port the most important uh, kernels inside of avbp into a c++ uh, framework uh, which ohms uh, tools could uh, read and then uh, 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 compile them uh, so Uh, and these are the results uh, from our mini kernel uh, so what is shown on the lo is the ideal speed up that you would expect uh, the green and gray are the open mp results with uh, core binding and uh, thread binding and the blue is the uh, ompss uh, results uh, as you can see uh, due to the very low uh, compute uh, in our gather scatter kernel so we ported a very simple simplified uh, uh, version of the gather scatter with not so much compute in, in inside so due to the really low uh, compute uh, per gather scatter uh, loop uh, we actually see a sort of degradation in in speed up as you move beyond uh, uh, 24 uh, uh, processors 
sorry 24 cores uh, and the other uh, problem we notice is the ohms version that we currently implement is sort of suboptimal uh, because our open mp code leverages thread local storage uh, to create these cache blocks and uh, uh, loop blocks uh, into memory uh, since OMS is a task-based uh, prog programming paradigm, uh, we really cannot, uh, you know, do a thread, thread local storage. So we had to create these uh, or allocate these uh, cache blocks uh, uh, on the fly for every uh, OMS task and destroy it afterwards. So this sort of creates a big overhead on on the OMS execution, uh, but. What this really gives us is a very good test bed or a test platform uh, to assess what is the best algorithm that we can come up with uh, for ohms. So, and once once we freeze on on the best uh, algorithm, uh, this should help us put it back into our AVBP solver. And hopefully, when when the support for uh, type bound procedure is available, uh, we should have the full application uh, running in ohms. And uh, as, as, as a side note, we also have some more activities on the coarse grain models. Uh, we used uh, GASPI, uh, the, especially the collect collectives uh, of GASPI, uh, and uh, we wrapped it into uh, AVBP because AVBP uh, is really limited by the uh, already used sum operation, uh, which is uh, extremely necessary in, in the combustion LES uh, models. Uh, so they really limit uh, the scalability or, or you know, the efficiency of the AVBP code. Uh, since GASP has uh, really high performance uh, primitives for uh, collectives, uh, we sort of wrapped those GASP collective uh, calls uh, into Fortran and we created a, a, a new library called GOLF, uh, which is uh, GASP collectives and GPI2 Fortran wrapper for AVBP. And uh, through GOLF, uh, we call these all reduced functions inside of AVBP uh, and we have a hybrid ex execution, which means uh, MPI does the initialization and GASP runs inside of MPI. Uh, and we have actually achieved good performance over uh, MPI for a hybrid execution model uh, where you have one MPI process per node and then you have multiple threads running on a given uh, socket. Uh, this sort of uh, configuration is, is, is best for GASP and you can leverage uh, the uh, performance gains from GASP. But since uh, we still find uh, the, the hybrid parallelization is not really uh, you know, better than the full MPI version, uh, it becomes really less significant for uh, the pure uh, MPI execution. Uh, but we are quite uh, hopeful that once we complete uh, successfully and extract maximum performance out of the uh, hybrid execution code of AVBP. Uh, this uh, golf library should uh, help us extract even more uh, by improving the uh, performance of the collective operations, especially the all reduced sum. So uh, to wrap up, uh, these are some of the big lessons uh, that we learned uh, going uh, forward in the project. Uh, topology awareness is extremely critical for exascale. Uh, it is it is like uh, it's not good to have. It it is must to have. Uh, and the another thing that we really uh, learned is Fortran is no longer a first class citizen in HPC. Uh, most of the new developments are mostly supported on C and uh, C plus plus side, uh, probably because of. Uh, uh, availability of the LLVM and Clang infrastructure. And um, we also noticed that pragma based or directive based programming models uh, really give competitive speed up uh, with, with effort. Uh, it doesn't come without effort or, or free, but with effort, it does uh, yield yields uh, competitive uh, speed up. Uh, and it also leads to a more portable and maintainable code because we are not tied to a specific uh, language or library or, or, or paradigm of, of writing the code. So the code is still a Fortran code, uh, but with just pragmas. So it's, it's quite uh, easy to maintain as well. Uh, 
uh, and we also found that uh, really great gains uh, can be obtained by changing the data structure and uh, the kernel loop structure uh, based on the architecture. For example, GPUs uh, prefer uh, stride, non-strided contiguous uh, access. Uh, so if you can arrange your data in, in, in such a fashion, then uh, you would probably exploit more of the uh, GPU architecture. Uh, whereas on the CPU, you are more restricted by the cache and the locality of, uh, of memory. And uh, this, this sort of a dichotomy still exists. Uh, so this, this, this was something that we had to trade off uh, when, when, when you want your code to be really portable across uh, heterogeneous platforms. Uh, the last lesson that we, we really learned was uh, coloring with uh, some kind of cache re renumbering gives a significant speed up, even though coloring destroys uh, cache ordering or uh, cache locality. But with good renumbering strategies, uh, you can still get a significant speed up and the code is extremely readable. The loops are quite simple, free from mutex and uh, other uh, you know, uh, synchronization primitives. Uh, so this gives a very clean readable code. Uh, at the same time, uh, it gives a good speed up as well with the right renumbering and you know uh, cache friendliness built into the coloring. Uh, going forward uh, as an outlook, uh, we uh, we see a lot of improvements that are possible through the GASPI. Uh, collective performance on a single die. So once we start moving towards the uh, hybrid MPI model where you have a single MPI process per node and then on a node you use say OMS or uh, OpenMP or OpenACC to uh, uh, do the parallelization. I think we, we, we do see a lot of gains there. Um, <clears throat> and we also would like to uh, you know, compare uh, a, a hybrid MPI implementation vis-a-vis -vis, uh, a, a pure MPI implementation that can leverage uh, MPI3 shared memory. Uh, so this is also a, a nice uh, alternative because uh, maybe we have more gains uh, on one end than the other. Uh, and, you know, lock-free colored loops on the GPUs is, is another uh, uh, possibility that 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 is worth looking at. Uh, why why can't we leverage the same coloring on uh, the GPU execution? Uh, similarly, use coloring for uh, asynchronous execution of uh, Open ACC kernels. So you can actually select these kernels and then color them such that no two kernel will interfere with each other and asynchronously <coughs> execute these kernels on the GPU. So these are other possibilities that we are looking at. And then the future direction of uh, OMS porting of uh, AVBP will be uh, uh, towards the uh, GPU version, uh, OpenACC with the OMS. Uh, but we are still hoping that uh, the Fortran part uh, is, is, is gets its support and uh, this should uh, really help us go forward. But as of now, the mini kernel really gives us a good playground uh, to assess uh, the uh, possible algorithms that 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 are uh, suitable for the ohms uh, parallelization and also uh, play with the open acc gpu version uh, using the mini kernel thank you for your attention uh, we like to thank the uh, european union's uh, horizon 2020 uh, research and innovation program uh, for funding the this work uh, and also thanks to Gen C through the Iridis uh, HPC allocation for uh, uh, the Grand Challenge Genre uh, program. And thanks again. Thanks for your attention.